needed to. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, it was mostly VMO too, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was like, I had no soreness on VL or anything like that. Cause I basically like, I took the two pads, I put one on the VMO, one on the VL. Um, and then the top one up where you're supposed to put it. And, um, I was really only sore with the VMO, but it was like the perfect amount of soreness. It was like, oh, it's there, but it's not killer. Gotcha. The first time Jackson and I tried them, I mean, I don't know if we overdid it or anything, but I was super sore. I mean, it was hard to sit. <laughs> How high were you able to get it up? The first time I tried it, I think I only got it up to like 23, maybe 30 max. That was uh it. No, it was with the with the complex. What is it? The the white one? Yeah, no, no, the green one. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that many. I can't get it up super high. No, no. <laughs> and I got I used the white one yesterday, and I got it up to maybe mid twenties, and it burns. I mean, it's like, yes. yeah. I think once you keep using it though, your body kind of gets used to it and you're able to go yeah. higher. Yeah. And as the muscle starts to kind of fire a little bit more, the perception of how strong it is will go down and I can turn it up from there. But yeah, it took some time for sure. <laughs> it was good though. So Brandon is having some difficulty in saying like the meeting is closed, which is really weird because we're all in, in the meeting right now. But that's okay. We just keep talking, hanging out, discussing it. The chair gets set up. You've got a nice little set up there. With your little bands on the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, the gym that we are a part of, they let us take some stuff, some equipment home that's during little, the That's really nice. I had some of this from my athletic training room that I just, you know, grabbed from school and stuff. So it's yeah. been pretty nice. <sighs> some dumbbells, some BFR cuffs. Yeah. Nice. I left all my, my, um, they're not true BFR cuffs. They're just like wrap around ones, but those mm -hmm. are at the high school. I'm actually going to get all that stuff tomorrow. Nice. Mm -hmm. Stuff. Um, all I've got are spaghetti bands and mini bands. And we actually have like four 55 pound plates, um, that we got from like an equipment change thing and um but that's all we don't have dumbbells or anything like that so it's either like a squat with a 55 pound plate or it's like a banded or air or something like that so make it work yeah it's been a lot of body weight which i'm not used to and i'm like really out of shape with any kind of body weight work <laughs> so what kind of bfr cuffs do you have there uh i've got the smart cuffs I love oh, do you? those. I've used those before. Yeah. They're, they're great. They're pretty nice. Yeah. And they're not tethered, right? You can just, you pump them up and you can unclip them. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I try and do one one upper body and one lower body day a week with those, and then I'll mix in some body weight interval stuff the rest of the week. Nice. And walking lunges in an emergency. <laughs> all right sorry guys all right so yo this is brandon brandon um is there somewhere different you can put that the camera because you got or close the blinds behind you yeah you look like a ghost gotta love COVID 19 meetings they're just fantastic <laughs> but better yeah. yes sir oh my gosh sorry guys i've been trying to apologize for being late uh Technology's not working. Mm. I, we were in the middle of one the other day, and my internet just shut down at the, at the computer, just shut down at the house. So I don't know. It, it just happens to all of us. No worries. Well, thanks for having me. Sorry for uh, going late. No worries. <laughs> all right. So um, I'll, I'll kind of do the introduction here in a second, but what is your plan? What is the workout so that they can go ahead and start putting the, the pads on? Who's got devices and where do they want to put it? We can do, I prefer quads, calves, delts, biceps. Um, those are always easy areas to access. 
Um, quads are always the, the, the most fun because easy to hold of, easy to understand, uh, but we can go anywhere, anywhere that's comfortable for someone. So Megan has her, her guns blazing already. Perfect. So no. biceps with Megan. Chad, what are you going to do? I'll do anything. So Chad's really sore from doing a thousand lunges yesterday, walking lunges. So Chad can do a probably not with me. Was that? So Chad can do upper body with me. All right, and then so what you want to do, Chad? Uh, do your Go ahead and pick something. All right, Brandon, pick something for Chad. Quads. I'm sorry. Someone needs to do quads. Someone needs to do upper body. Quadzilla. All right. Chad, I'll switch and do quads with, or if you want to do upper, so you're not killing yourself. Oh, I'll be fine. I'm all right. How do I have to use the smaller one for upper body? So, oh yeah. So use a smaller one for upper body. And what you're going to need is you're going to need three electro pads for upper body. You're going to basically, yep, there you go. Perfect. And two. Um, you can use one in your left hand and then uh, two of the ones in your right hand. So it's a three, it's a oh, three my, okay. hookup. Yeah. So the, well, the one in your left hand and then two of the ones in your right hands. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then when like you go on the one. app, you'll see exactly how I want you to put it on the bicep. This is going to suck. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, what are you doing? I'm doing quads. Good. Quads. Well, yeah. you could do calves. Calves are a good one. You could do. So do calves. See if... Yeah. Go ahead and do calves. Calves is a really good one. You guys all have complex minis, or uh, does that somebody have something different? All, everyone has complex minis. So I'm going to be using the complex performance because the complex uh, minis doesn't connect to my my um, Android phone. Okay, so you're one of the ones that have a problem. Okay, so go ahead on the calves. Basically, you're going to only hook up two channels. So okay. just do uh, uh, the blue channel and the green channel. Okay. Plug those in. Okay. Do a electro pad on the top of your calf one on the bottom. So they're pretty close together. They'll be spaced about that far apart. Okay. And do a black snap on top and a red snap on bottom. All right. What program do you want us to do? I want everyone to, they're gonna do, everyone's gonna do resistance. And then on the wired device, I want you, Sophia, to go to resistance level five on, um, and then get it going. Everyone's gonna have a, besides you, Sophia, Sophia, you can actually bypass the warm up phase and go straight to the, um, working phase, but for the kind of just to see everyone initially, how everyone fires, let me see, see the muscles as it fires to give me a better example. So I'll do my standard, my standard overview for everyone. And Sophia, you'll just bypass the program a little different than maybe on the wireless device. Okay. So, in so real quick, we can go to, you can, if you can see my screen. So Megan, you asked about the heater, right? Yeah. What's so up that, with that? that it, it looks like a radiator, and so we actually had the same conversation with Brandon before. Yep. That's the the warm up. So it's like a five minute warm up, um, and it gets your muscles ready, prepped. But it also works for recovery. So if you're going to do strength or resistance, you want to you know you normally want to warm up, and so that's what that setting is for. But if you're already warmed up and you're ready to get right into the workout, you can skip that phase by hitting down on uh, the wired units. I know for sure. So that's really cool. And Jeremy, I had invited Katie on, on this. Will you just forward her the thread so she can watch it live? She'll share it on our social media. So this is Katie Lothridge at DJ uh, Global. Perfect. Is that about right? Yeah, so you can, you can you're pretty much there. You're, you, the top one, you made me move them down just a, a hair, but you're pretty dang good. You're pretty dang close. Yep, beautiful. That's the setup I want to see. Perfect. I'm just a little bit longer. All right. So while they're getting set up, Brandon, what are some of the things that you're seeing at home? We're seeing with the, with the workouts, what's the, some of the stuff that's working or some of the stuff that's not working? For yeah. So for me, you know, honestly, I, I actually had a, a collapsed lung last year. So I was really on the downside. Uh, I actually, two weeks ago, I was doing a bear complex, had something flare back up in my lung. So I've actually been off the radar being able to lift anything. So I pulled my compacts back out and everything I'm going to tell everyone to do, I haven't been able to go as dynamic, but I've been using my compacts every single morning for glutes, hamstrings, quads, 
so on and so forth have been lighter on the upper body but more or less on the lower part and it's just a good reminder that you can be in a studio apartment you know one bedroom studio apartment or a single little tiny 500 square foot apartment and you can get a full workout on with compex during all this kind of wild crazy covid stuff we're seeing a lot of customers our sales i'll be transparent this has been the highest revenue weeks that we've had all of 2020 even earlier before all this stuff started because everyone's understanding that Compex works for training for activation in tight confined areas so really what we're seeing is just the people are really understanding what we're going to talk about today and a lot of that's not always understood by the customer so that was really my goal today is to take everyone here run everyone through a simple workout which is good because we got glory muscles with Megan we got quad you know with 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 Chad, which everyone wants to train. And then, you know, Cass, I mean, that's a, that's another really good one to hit on. So I think we're going to do a really good job covering the kind of go-to bases without having to walk too many different, you know, channels. Did you say glory muscles? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Brandon, what was the email? What was the email for Katie again? It's uh, just Katie dot Lothridge, L-O-U-G-H, R-I-D-G-E. Man, if I said that right away, I'm spot on. Let me double check. Uh, at djoglobal.com. Okay, because I'm terrible at listening and typing. So So what I do I do is this. I'll write an email right now to you, Jeremy, and I'll CC Katie. Okay. So she should be able to actually find it if she goes to facebook.com slash sportsmedicinebroadcast or sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash facebook. It'll be the live video. Here is the link. So, Jeremy, you'll send the link. Uh, I said, there we go. I just sent it over right now. Okay. And she'll replay it. So, we've been sharing a lot of this stuff. I mean, social media has really just come back alive since Katie came on board. And uh, so, she'll get it, she'll get this pushed out pretty heavy. She might even put some money behind it. That'll work. All right, so everybody hooked up and ready to start? Yeah. Yeah, let me yell at my kids real quick, too, to make sure they don't come down bouncing down the stairs. What do you want us to have in terms of equipment? Uh, you can grab a broom handle. You can grab a PVC pipe. Um, you can grab a mop. You know, anything that's a – anything that you, you don't need anything, but you can also grab something like, you know, you can do it just dynamic with nothing, or you can pick up literally anything that's straight that resembles a barbell um, as well. Uh, for Sophia – Sophia, do you have any steps in your house at all by chance? No, I can no? step on the chair I'm sitting. Do you have any books in your house that are oh, hard okay. books? Mm -hmm. so get a couple hard books to just give yourself like almost the height difference of like a, a curve or just some sort of little height. You know, you can even do like a old school dictionary work, something, you know, that's like that or a little bit more. And I'm actually going to have you um, stand on it to do some just simple little calf raises um from that to be able to go below parallel and above parallel okay let me get that all right so we've been streaming live for a little while again we got brandon hearn from djo global with is the senior product guru for uh for compex and we've had a couple of conversations with him and Dave just about the units, how to use them, what we've experienced, things like that. And so if you're at home, like most of the nation, and you're trying to figure out how to stay fit, you got tired of uh, just doing the exact same exercises, then these are some really cool, affordable units that really increase the intensity of your workout uh, and really allow you to get some extra work in without uh, all the heavy weights that's, or the things that you would normally have at a gym so as soon as brandon is ready we can get started yeah. so i've got megan mormo uh megan say your last name more mile more mile so i got megan more mile she's been on a couple times so she's going to be working on biceps or that's what brandon said the glory muscles sophia's going to be doing calves she should be doing step ups on some books and then chad is going to be doing quads which is going to be fun because yesterday he did uh, like a thousand walking lunges just because he wanted to um and so it's gonna be a good opportunity to see different areas different ways that we can work um so brandon one of the things i didn't see on the website a 
a pad placement for like pecs for chest. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason not to? So no, so, so pecs are fine. We just like to talk through it because due to the FDA guidelines and standards, you are not allowed to cross the midline of the body. So a lot of people tend to get really confused with that. And we started seeing a lot of really terrible pad placements of people trying to do their chest, but they're actually doing it wrong. As we know, there's no real muscles in the body that cross up, you know, that midline, right? We would see guys hooking up the left or right pec and crossing over to the left. And we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa time out, stop. So we pulled that down because we want to be able to put more educational videos out explaining right pec, left pec, stick to those areas and you can use it. So there is nothing wrong with it. It's just, you must follow the, the steps. We would rather make sure they understand the steps opposed to just trying to go the wrong way. So that's why we want to re, re, uh, restart that again, but do it right. Okay. I think everybody is set up and ready. So uh, just on your lead, whenever you're ready, just give them some instructions and, and we'll kind of talk through and watch the videos from there. So. Got it. So what we're going to do is um, everyone's locked down at home amid this whole, you know, lockdown uh, issue going around globally. Um, so with compacts, you can actually train in your home with, you know, little to nothing at that point in time. Megan, it sounds like she's got a mop handle. Chad's just got his, uh, yeah, there we go. Megan's got a handle. Chad's just going to go ahead and do some simple, uh, I wouldn't use a band, Chad. You're going to not be able to walk if I do that to you. Um, yeah, right, you can't walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, Sophia picked up some books. I asked Sophia, do you have any kind of uh, uneven surface in your area? She said, no. I said, do you have any old dictionaries, school books, or anything like that? She said, yes. So we're going to create almost like a curb uh, in Sophia's house. So what I want everyone to do, we're going to kind of do it together, and then we'll kind of focus on each person as we go along. I always like to do my demos really in a, in a three-step three deal. I want everyone to go to the program called pre-warm-up. Now, pre-warm-up is available in all of our models except for the edge. And if you have an edge at home and you want to try to use pre-warm-up, Go ahead and go to the recovery program because the recovery program actually starts out at the same intensity as the uh, pre warm up program. So go ahead and turn it on. Everyone get activated. Turn on your device. Put it on pre warm up. Turn it up. Uh -huh. There we go. So, what just happened with Megan is what I want everyone to experience. That's called the light bulb effect. So uh, it's just basically, what happened just now was. Everything turns on, right? So I love that expression. It's one of my favorite things to, to see. It is called the light bulb effect. So Megan, what number are you on on the app? <laughs> so Megan's at four, okay? So Compax, you can just see what's going on right now. Megan's at four. Compax goes to 999 on all models, except for the, uh, for the uh, mini. So Katie, the mini will go up to 299. But for Chad and Sophia, or Chad's actually on a mini as well. Sophia has a wired device, wired and wireless. You can go up to 999. So what's going on? You're kind of seeing. Chad, are you hooked up? Are you good? You're getting some muscle twitching? Oh, there it there is. There we go. Look at those. Quadzilla, it's on. Sophia, how are we doing over there? I got mine going too. Good. <laughs> Perfect. So what I want to do is, is to look at the number they're at. We know Megan's at four. Chad, how hard are you? At six. Chad's at six. Sophia, how hard are you? 25. Okay, good. So, what really, a show off. <laughs> I like to do this because I like to see everyone have a different reaction. Chad may, may only need six because he worked out his quads yesterday. Megan may only need four because she worked out the day before, or who knows, she may have an, an old injury that's flared up. There's so many different things. So I just like to see where everybody is before we go ahead and turn you on to the resistance program. So now what I want you to do is we're going to start with Megan. Chad, Sophia, go ahead and let your legs kind of warm up a little bit. Megan, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the program called resistance. Actually, Chad and, and Sophia, you can do the same. Let's all do it together. And I'll work through it with every one of you. My hands were shaking like crazy. So Sophia, on your, since you have the wired device, I want you, there's a little old school heater, little furnace. Mm -hmm. If you're from the East Coast, it should look familiar. It kept you warm in the wintertime. I want you to go ahead and turn that off. Okay. And you said level five, right? Level five. I always like everyone to go to level five if you're, if you're an active body person. So go ahead and everyone go to, to, to resistance, turn it on. 
And what's going to happen is I want you to turn it up. And I always use the analogy that I want you to turn it up seven out of 10, 10 being like, oh my God, Brandon, I'm going to tear this thing off. Let's go ahead and find seven and don't do anything. Just go ahead and relax. Turn it up until you find that level seven out of 10 on the intensity. Okay. So go ahead and turn it up. So on compacts, there's eight seconds of work, four seconds of rest, eight seconds of work, four seconds of rest. And the work is the contraction phase that's going to feel to some like you might be getting a cramp or you're getting the muscle to really move. So I want you to go ahead and turn up the intensity during that contraction cycle. Is it normal to have a flex mechanism in my fingers? Yeah. So okay. what we're going to show right now is it's, it's pulling you up like this, right? So if you were to leave your arms out, Megan, it's going to pull your arms back to you, right? So why, so I, I noticed this the other day too, when I did it on my quads, why um, does it sometimes go like unilaterally? So it's like, you know how it'll be like a long one and then it'll be bup, 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 bup. And then sometimes um, one side goes and the other one doesn't. So on the wireless, right? So that's why we only made the mini in a two channel. So Bluetooth is truly at the end of the day, Bluetooth is not the greatest solution for muscle stimulation. It's just not. Our wireless device, our higher end device is a proprietary radio frequency. It never, never fails, never misses, never. Bluetooth is not intended for, for this. We put it into the market to allow people to get something easy and quick at home. So yeah, there are, you know, transparent. There are inconsistencies at time because the radio frequency is so much more powerful than your cell phone. Your cell phone is really only meant for like speakers and a few things. So that's kind of the difference. That's why the devices are kind of talking. And sometime on the mini, you will get that. So we, we left the power at 299. We kept it kind of simple. So, you know, good point. I, I like to take that kind of stuff head on, but it, it will happen on the mini. It'll happen with any wireless device that's Bluetooth brand. So what you see is Megan's getting the contraction. So now everyone's probably getting a contraction. What I want you to do, Megan, I want you to squeeze your hands and I want you to fight against that contraction on the next round. Chad and Sophia, I want you to do the same. I want you to squeeze that muscle and fight against that contraction and try to own that. You're gonna notice the intensity isn't so strong. So when it contracts, Megan's on the screen. So Megan, when it contracts now, it's not as intense, right? No, not nearly. So good, so you're fighting against it. So now here's where it gets really fun. So I like to have everyone go to pre-warm up, figure out where they are, do the seven out of 10 test without fighting against it. Now Megan and Chad and everyone else is seeing, you can fight against the contraction and it's not nearly as intense as it normally is. So Megan, we'll start with you. What I want you to do is I want you to slowly, the nice part about the Compex Mini is on your right arm, you have a plus and a, a, plus and a minus. You don't need your phone to adjust the intensity. You can do it right there on your arm. So what I want you to do, Megan, is you can actually take, take your arms and I want you to just do some negative extensions, okay? So I want you to pull them up and then when it starts to, when it starts to contract, I want you to slowly go out and do a nice negative one, two, and I want you to fight through it. Here's the kicker. You got to turn the intensity up every round. Chad, what I want you to do, I want you to keep slight, there we go. I want you to keep slight flexion in the knees, Chad, because if you stand all the way up, fully extended, you can not tip over. So let's not do that. So what I want you to do is keep a little bit of flexion in your knee. I want, when the device to contracts, give me a nice slow air squat. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Pause and then come back up. I want you to do that through the cycles, Chad. Megan, my goal for you, you're at what intensity level do you know? Five. Yeah. My goal for you every round, pick it up by one. Chad, what number are you on? 19. Okay, good. I want you to work on that as well. So Chad, do you notice like when you're trying to squat down, you really can't cheat the squat. I want you to go all the way down below parallel and sit in the hole. So huh. come on, all the way down, 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 oh, down, 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 down. Perfect. And then when it's done contracting, come back up. Don't fully extend, keep flexion in the knee. There you go. There you go. Right now, Chad, okay. I want you to go ahead and turn that up every round too. So fight against that. Keep doing negatives. So I want you to do some negatives, Katie. Chad, I want you to keep doing squats. Sophia, how are we doing? Doing good. Just moving my calves up and down. Good. 
So what you could actually do is you can actually t stand up during the, the rest phase, you can stand up and I want you to just keep one foot planted on the floor and I want you to keep the other foot on the, the books, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to stand on the edge of the step and just give me nice negatives, up, negative, up, negative, up, and do one leg at a time or you can do both legs if you're comfortable doing it. So when it's contracting, like you see Chad working and Megan working, I want- my armpits, it hurts. <laughs> you can turn it down. And this if you, is so high. You, you, can, you can pause it and readjust the path. Sometimes it might be a little sensitive being up here in the armpit, Megan. You could also move it down or you can actually pause it, hit pause, take off the big electrodes, grab a small one if you want to, or you can do that, whatever works for you. Always, if something's not comfortable, pause it, readjust, start again. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm sweating more than I Oh, yeah. No, no. Here's, I, we haven't talked to Chad yet, but I guarantee you Chad's probably getting a nice, good sweat. So, My Sophia, there we go. I see what's going on with Sophia. So, Sophia, when it contracts, I want you to slowly go down and then come back up. And then in between those cycles, Sophia, I want you to rest parallel. What number are you at, Sophia? Uh, 15. How's it feeling? I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Chad's adding a little bit of weight in. I like that. So be careful on weight, Chad. You're, you are going to have a really difficult time using the restroom tomorrow. I'm just being honest with you. It's going to be a free for all, like a free fall from about parallel down to the toilet lid. So uh, just be uh, cognitive of, of the weight. It It is brutal. Two, two days after is freaking ridiculous like I, I think i've talked about it every time i've talked about the complex like if you overdo it in the beginning you are truly gonna regret it it's it's bad how are we doing over there megan i don't remember if the eccentric is supposed to be going down or coming up so you want to do the nice full extension all the way down pause and then well, relax and come back up in, the, in between i can like it's just wild how it goes into my wrists so, and that could also be on the inside here, Sophia, or on um, Megan, it could also be right here. If you tend to put a pad on the inside here, sometimes that will go to, go down in, into your hand a little bit more. I'm gonna adjust. Sophia, how are we doing? Doing good, bumping, bumping up to 17. How's your intensity feeling? Uh, staying at seven out of 10. Okay, good. Chad, how are we? Good. So everyone, so, uh, Sophia, you can go ahead and pause. Chad, you can go ahead and pause. Megan, you can go ahead and pause. So let's bring everyone back on camera real quick. And we'll kind of go around the room. And so we'll start with Sophia. So, Sophia, how did that feel? Like, are you sweating? Are you, you feel like you've had any kind of workout? What's going on? I mean, I'm sweating. And I only did, what, like three minutes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like they got a 30-minute workout. So it feels great. So I'll be honest, Sophia, you're going to be walking like a duck a little bit tomorrow <laughs> the day after. It's just, that's what's going to happen. But the reason I like to do the calves is for people that like to run, people that are athletic, that like to jump. So if you're any kind of athlete, a lot of explosion, obviously we know comes out of your, your know, hamstrings, your glutes, quads. People tend to forget about the calves a lot. A lot of power still generates out of those calves. Um, so that little trick that you just did with a, with a set of books, Anyone that's really serious about running faster, being more explosive and jumping higher, if you add that into your rep, you know, into your program, the results in 45 days will be absolutely amazing. I mean, I encourage people, you know, depending on if you have a high or low ceiling, check your vert and then go back and do that. Do what you just did. Do that twice a week, slowly increasing your intensity every week, and then go back and test your vert. Your vertical will increase. Without a doubt, we've seen guys go up as high as almost nine inches. Um, you'll get at least two inches more to your vert, guaranteed. Um, sometimes you'll get more. So, Chad, how are you feeling? Good, a little shaky. Sweating at all? Um, I'm, clo I'm close. I'm like more like trying to catch up breath-wise. Like I feel like I'm like, oh, boy. The feedback, um, the, thing, the quad feedback was really pretty interesting though like you can actually feel like I'm, i was twitching the entire time and it was it was good so you know before obviously you picked up any weight did it feel like your body was under load yes 
Yeah, and so interesting. So we had Sophia was sweating. You were having difficulty catching your breath, right? Because everything's kind of picking up as you would be training. And I'll explain here in a second as to why we're getting through that. Actually, I'll explain now. So yesterday when you did your um, lunges, the best of the best, Phil Heath, Matt Frazier, LeBron James, Glenn Wade, anyone, you take any athlete, those athletes can only really fire and isolate and recruit about 40 to 45% of a muscle group, right? So with compacts, every single time it's contracting your muscles, it's doing so at 100%. So it's commanding the body to work more than it ever has. You know, I always joke that it's legal doping. There's nothing wrong with it. You're stimulating the body, and then you start training the body at a higher intensity than it, than it ever could be done. That's why people get stronger. That's why people get faster. That's why people become more explosive. So, you know, just seeing what you're doing, we don't tell people stop working out, stop running, stop lifting. Add this in as a secondary tool. You know, a lot of athletes will do, uh, you know, yoga or other things to really improve their abilities. Compact should really also be considered that. And as a time of right now where everyone's locked in their houses or locked in their areas, this is one of the best tools to maintain your fitness level and, and, and really keep things going. And Megan, how are we? Feels good. I think the pad pla placement for the biceps is going to be really important. Important. Yeah. Cause it's like, I feel okay on my right arm and it feels like on my left arm, I'm just getting like nothing but nerves. Yep. Um, especially coming down into my wrist and my hand, but it's, it, it feels like physical. It feels like there's an invisible hand, like on my wrist, that's trying to push me down and I have to resist against it. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the biceps can be a little difficult because there are a lot of nerves and there's a lot of things running down into your fingers. Right. So we do that at demos too. I'll run people on demos and sometimes even me, I mean, I can typically do pad places with my eyes closed. It'll take me a few times to get an exact for someone because everyone's yeah. different. And on um, up too, I think like make sure you're not getting that musculoskeletal nerve because that's gonna. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. <laughs> so I mean, really, we've been on the call for roughly, you know, we'll say I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Each one of you guys are able to go through and do something that was really simple. Um, I know you grabbed a broom handle. You know, there's other things you could do. We hook it up onto your deltoids. Just do some simple overhead presses with the broom handle in your hands. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can do with it, but really it required zero equipment other than a set of books. And you guys were able to get, you know, get a workout in. So really my goal today was to show this side of compacts to the users out there at, Hey, pull that thing out of your closet. Hey, dust that thing off, put the battery in, you know, get some new electrodes and do this training at home. This will allow for you to kind of, get that, you know, training in that, you know, you know, physical activity that some people are really just not able to get at this current time. Um, so that was really my idea and goal for today. All right. So if you're looking at, if I know the edge and then the performance, performance they, they have the endurance phase. Does the mini have the endurance phase as well? It does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if they were going to do some more workouts, maybe uh, Chad decides he's going to do another thousand lunges and, you know, next week, so would he use the endurance phase during that or would we still be using resistance or what? So resistance is my go-to for everyone almost every single time. Um, endurance is really in the program side of things for those who are just getting started again. So if somebody's watching this and they're like, man, that looks really interesting. I want to give it a try, um, but I haven't worked out in a year. That's, that's great. That customer is who I'd want to have uh, use endurance because it's not aggressive. You're, you're, you're going after those slow twitch type fibers. Everything that everyone went after right now is a slow twitch or a fast twitch type two uh, muscle fiber. So, the, so you're dipping into those high intensity, you know, muscles that are used during hit workouts. The, the endurance is, it's a fantastic tool for re-education, for rebuilding, for just getting started again. So for everyone on this call, uh, endurance is not relevant. Um, but for those of you that may have not trained in, in quite some time, Endurance would be a great program to start off with. Um, and on the other devices, you have strength and explosive strength. So what you could do is say, for instance, Chad's like, all right, I'm done doing a thousand lunges. I want to, you know, I haven't been able to do a heavy three by three in the gym for a long time. God, I'd love to throw, you know, 325 on my back and squat it three times. Go ahead and put on the strength program. The strength program is 
short contraction, very long rest time, short contraction, very long rest time. But what is happening is you're starting to get deeper into those type two fibers than you are on the resistance program. So the way I equate it is that's almost like training again, like I said, as a heavy three by three. And then for those of you who are like, man, I haven't maxed on anything in a really long time. I, I miss doing a, a max uh, overhead press or a bench press or primary squat or whatever it might be. You could actually put on explosive strength and train with that as well. Um, and that actually mirrors the same muscles that are recruited um, on the, uh, you know, one rep maxes that are loaded into the, uh, um, the uh, explosive strength program. I'm sorry. All right. So what questions do you guys after using these have for Brandon about the device or again, I guess a Chad with, you know, sore quads from doing a thousand lunges, maybe how he can use that or something like that. So what, what questions do y'all have? I think it's just going to be a lot of trial and error and kind of playing around because yeah, absolutely i'm thinking of like pretty much every movement barbell movement dumbbell movement that you could do in the gym you could do with this on i think the issue is more like having to fix it to all these different areas so it's like you know every time you were to ch to change the movement you'd be looking at moving the pads around um but nonetheless i mean i think having not having a dumbbell in my hand I've been struggling a lot and like Jeremy had kind of asked at the beginning, like, what do we typically do that we're missing out on? And for me, it's lifting. Yeah. Um, so I've been struggling a lot. And I said, I was kind of like doing these little body weight things and trying to get like my more high intensity stuff up. Cause I lack that a lot. Um, but yeah, I miss being able to lift. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of really what this is nice. I mean, me personally, I've been doing hamstrings, glutes and quads, uh, this week, I just did quads again this morning. I'm kind of laying off the upper body for another week, but you know, you're right. You can hit those really air, those, those big muscle group areas as Jeremy or as Chad did, and you can fatigue them. I mean, you can fatigue them really, really easy. You know, the caveat I always give everyone is just remember, you probably don't want to go dynamic for the entire length of the program. I always tell people limit to about 10 for your first couple times. You know, I was here with you guys, so you guys were doing more, but you know, I was able to see where you were at, where we were starting, right? You'll get some people that are like, I'm going to pull this thing out. I want to try to find the ceiling. And then they just blow themselves up, you know? So the goal is kind of build up as you would be, right? Going right back into the gym. But anything that you want to hit muscle-wise, you know, Megan, I encourage you to do it. And the way I became really educated in the device is, is, is the same way that you are, trial and error. I put it on, tried something, put it on, tried something. So would you recommend then, like, kind of for someone like me focusing on eccentric components to any kind of body weight major muscle group movement with the compacts on in that resistance setting to where it's like I'm focusing on eccentrically working against it for the whole time it's on and then resting and then doing it that way yes absolutely that um, you know and, and Jeremy actually touched on a point one of my favorite ones to do a lot of guys like to do push-ups with it on right so I like to throw it on the pectorials like to put it on but what happens is the pectorials are under such load their midline and their core section fails and we do a lot of demos we'll have guys doing push-ups and they're sweating and they're shaking and they're trying to go down and go back up and their midline fails our our, our whole goal is we don't want to we don't want anything to fail in the core midline whether you're air squatting whether you're, whatever you're doing we want you to keep a nice tight midline so what i'll actually do on demos is take the device that sophia had i'll put it on their pectorials for channel channel and then i'll hook up their their core section with the compacts on and then have them do push-ups again so you could actually almost even take this to another level uh with the mini you only have two channels but if you have a wired device or other wireless device you could technically go quads and core at the same time so jeremy doing those you know air squats you know what happens people tend to you know collapse the midsection a little bit if you throw on the the, the core and a, an actual accessory muscle Oh my God, you're gonna be, you're gonna be dying. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna feel so fatigued, but in a safe way, you're gonna be dripping sweat. So I encourage you out there, play with that core placement as an accessory uh, muscle group and anything that you're working and almost practicing good habits again. And like primarily rectus abdominis, or do you? Play oh, it just depends. Like you know, someone all literally depending on the pads. So you had the big long pads. So if you were actually to hit the, the, the upper midsection 
in the lower, you could actually take those long pads and almost take the entire uh, course section with two pads. Because if you think of it, you have a two by four that goes on the top, two by four on the on the bottom, you almost en encapsulate that entire core. I mean, you, Jeremy, I'm sorry, uh, Chad and Sophia, you can see on the larger muscle groups, it grabbed everything. So as long as you're at the start and any point of kind of a, a muscle group in general, you're going to light that entire area up. So about, yesterday, oh. two days ago, um, actually, this is my oldest son here. He had on, he had the uh, complex on his quads, and I kept trying to tell him not to not to turn it up so high, but he kept turning up like the the rest phase. So here, put this on your ear so you can hear. Oh. All right. So talk a little bit about the turning up the number on the rest phase, and and what the goal is, right? You want to turn it up only on the work phase and then just let the rest phase follow. Yeah, so the rest phase, to be honest with you, it just keeps blood flow going through the body in between the working phase. So really the number on the rest phase, you can almost just leave it at zero and just focus primarily on the contraction cycle. It's still good to turn it up because it gives you kind of a baseline of where you're at. Like for me, when I'm working with people, I like to, to keep an eye on where we're at so I'll tend to bring up both together. So if I'm working with someone and they're at 115 on the contraction, I'll typically be around 80. And as I increase everything up, everything can come, will, will go with me. So I wouldn't focus so much on the rest phase. Um, it's, it's just providing blood flow. Um, I would focus more on the contraction intensity while using it. Do you have any other questions about using it? Yeah. But to be honest, Kids, I have three daughters as well. My oldest is 13. She goes and does uh, some stuff in the morning at uh, one of our local gyms. And she uses it as well. And I'm telling you, it's a, it's a really safe thing for kids to use because the hard part about, it, you know, kids, they want to lift, they want to get bigger, they want to get stronger, they want to get faster. But, you know, the body can only take so much loading, right, at a younger age. Compacts, you're focusing in primarily on that muscle group, making that muscle group work without loading the joint without loading anything else. So you can get some really high responses out of kids. It's almost, it's almost freakish what can happen with the younger athletes because they're, they're growing and they're accelerating so fast. Um, it's kind of, kind of interesting. So keep it up by, uh, and you know, I always tell people do a test, test something right now, test. You want to jump higher, go ahead and jump up, you know, mark on the side of your, your wall, maybe not with the marker because your dad might not be happy about it, but jump up and see how high you can jump. And then, do it on your calves the same way that Sophia was doing. And then go back in four weeks and then jump up and check your number again. I, I assure you, you will jump higher than you did uh, before. To how much? It varies for everyone. But kids, uh, younger athletes, we see some pretty interesting results out of, um, you know, it's pretty fun. So pad placement with regards to places that aren't necessarily like in the manual Mm -hmm. So like I moved it to triceps, right? Mm -hmm. um, can I use the bicep setting for the triceps? Does it really matter what setting that I'm using as long as I'm? No, no, it's just a, a suggestion. So that won't okay. matter at all. So I could no. theoretically use the quad setting for my triceps if I needed to. They're all the same. Okay. Yeah. And even on the older devices, um, you know, Sophia has a little mannequin guy and it shows like his arms, his legs. It doesn't matter. Just pick a program. Our new wire device, which is going to be coming out um, roughly around June, it's going to be a lot more intuitive on pad placement as well. I might try doing some stuff with triceps after this because this is neat. Yeah, I, I encourage you. You want if you play with that thing for a good couple of days, you're going to really see some pretty interesting. And then everyone, what I love about this device. What Megan might do might be completely different than what Sophia's doing and Chad might be doing something completely different than both of them. So what's nice is, you know, we have the light bulb effect with Megan on camera, which is fantastic. Then, you know, like she's saying, oh, I'm gonna start playing with the different ways. You'll take your own adventure and kind of figure out what works best for you or what you wanna do. And we highly encourage people to do that. And, 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 you know, this is not a one size fits all. That's why we have different programs. That's why we have different intensity levels. So we have different devices, um, you know, not everybody needs a, you know, four channel wireless device. It's not necessary for everyone, but for some, for some it is. Yeah. All right. So I, this is not officially endorsed by Compex or DJO, but Chad, I can see the wheels turning. How are you going to, you going to use this to, to like get somebody maybe, 
Kevin when he's asleep or something like that. So he just walked out. He walked up for a second. He walked out. How am I gonna what? So how are you gonna how are you gonna use this to get somebody? I can just see like you're ready to just to prank somebody, just to kind of put it on them and oh. here, just try this out. And, yeah, I I'm, I think we're gonna have to have a candid discussion about that at some point. Uh, I don't know. We'll have some sort of challenge. Maybe we'll do like a a plank challenge or a, a bridge, a, a glute bridge challenge or something. How long can you hold it? Kind of thing. That would be kind of fun for me. Wall sits with it on your quad. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. We have a lot of fun. You know, we we we, we keep everything safe, but we've done a lot of things at at expos where. You know, the guys at Kill Cliff were like, hey, we'll donate a bunch of Kill Cliffs. Let's, let's see if someone can drink it while it's on. And people are trying to drink and it's going yeah. all over them. But if you can drink it, you get a case. Um, we used to do a 999 challenge. Uh, of course, it always takes somebody to say that, you know, they didn't like it for us to have to stop doing that. But, you know, we try to have a lot of fun. Compact, is, it's a safe device. When it becomes unsafe is when people take a heavy weight load or even weight loads in general and overload the body, then it can become unsafe. But as you guys know, if I ask you, squeeze your, squeeze your bicep as hard as you can. Can you tear your bicep at all, squeezing it, just flexing it as hard as you can? Is it possible to really tear it or, 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 or rip it in any way, shape, or form just from, from, from flexing it, per se, without load? Well, that's what we're doing here with Compax. We're just making the muscle work and work to its full capacity. Even in the device, even if it says 999, eventually the muscle will stop recruiting. It, will, it, it won't be able to recruit anymore. So then that number almost becomes a fictitious number. But some people might need higher intensity. So again, it's not a one size fits all. It can work with anyone. Um, and you know, that's why I always tell people, take it easy, start before you run. You know, I always say, you know, if you want to put weight on, make sure you know what the heck you're doing before you do it. Um, because you can put yourself into a bad situation really quick, adding additional weight. But with body weight, the only thing you have to worry about is not falling over with it on the quad placement. So I always tell them keep the flexion in the knee. <laughs> we were using it in the weight room. It's one of my favorite videos is, is my coworker, Nick. He, he, we turned it up on his quads and he let us straighten and he was just like, ah, 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 stop, ah, stop. And it's, it just, it, it does, it reminds me of the same thing. And so when the boys were using it the other, the other night, they did the same thing. They let their legs straighten. It's like, hey, you can't let them straighten because then they're just like falling over. So yep. it's pretty That's funny. really kind of what I only rule is gentle on weight, and don't add it to you really know what the heck you're doing and then always keep flexing the knees. After that, you're pretty well good to go. All right, anything else you guys got? No, I appreciate it. This was fun. Thanks for letting me come on here and talk to you guys and, and put you guys through a little workout. That was fun. It was cool to get yep, more information on it just because I, I figured it was kind of just a learn by play. That's how I approach a lot of things. But um, no, this was really neat. Yeah, and, and anyone, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if you guys go on the website, you guys can live chat us. Uh, David Hernandez, he's not on the call. He's actually had a little head cold thing going on. Uh, he's better today. Um, he's on the back end. David's really knowledgeable as well. Um, he uses the device all the time. If you ever tune into our Instagram lives, he's the poor guy who's typically getting driven uh, on the device by me. Um, so Dave's really, really educated on the product. Um, so he can answer any questions. Somebody, you know, we get a lot of medical questions too. So we always divert that over to one of our, you know, medical specialists, um, just to be able to take a deeper dive as well. Um, so yeah, social media, live chat, whatever you guys need. Uh, we're happy to answer questions, take a deeper dive with anyone at any given time. Um, you know, and we've been doing it for 37 years. I've been with the company now for almost five years. So, you know, we're just, we're growing as we, as we, uh, as we learn, you know, learn new things as we grow. All right, so if anybody watching or if any of you that are participating wanted to get either more units, other units, or whatever, then if you email david.hernandez at djoglobal, is it dot .com? Yep, correct. Then, and you just tell them about the sports medicine broadcast, and they'll hook you up with a, a special price list Absolutely. for the devices better than you can get from pretty much anywhere else. Absolutely. Um, so, again, if you email david.hernandez at djoglobal.com, and, then, and tell them about the sports medicine broadcast. You know they'll hook you up. And again, maybe you can be part of this next time we do uh, some sort of chat or something like that. So It'll be fun. Thanks for having us. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully you guys, uh, Megan, Chad, Sophia, you can use it a bunch more, and then we can come back some other time, maybe a couple weeks or months or whatever, and just talk about how how you've used it on yourself or other people, what you like, don't like, and 
you know, just your overall feeling for it. So yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Sure. Great. All right. So for Jeremy, everybody that I just mentioned, Megan, Chad, Sophia, and Brandon in the sports medicine broadcast, that is a wrap. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Thank you.